Today I'm talking about having no personality, which is a lack of inner richness that corresponds with a lack of outer richness. Life is this kind of bland thing that you are a participant of, and so is your internal world, this bland thing that you kind of watch over. You don't have access to true subjective experience. Like, what does it feel like to be me? What does it feel like to be a human being? What does it feel like to be in this world? Where are my needs? Where are my wishes, desires, anxieties, and fears? You might feel a uh, kind of general underlying anxiety and boredom and frustration, but where is the reality? Where is the realness of these internal components? You do feel the world, but the limitations on feeling the world are expressed in how the world feels to you at this moment. The way that the world feels in its lack of richness corresponds to the lack of richness that you have access to within yourself. It's very likely that these things are alive and real, but there are unconscious inhibitions in the way between you and experiencing the reality of them. A lot of material is repressed. A lot of anxiety, pain, fear, things of this nature render your internal world inaccessible. So it feels not rich. You're kind of off in, you know, this, this part of you, your subjective experience is off on the sidelines and you're in this gray zone between your inner world and the outer world. Nothing seems compelling enough. You can't get closer to yourself and feel the richness of that. You can't replace inner richness with outer richness. You can pursue discipline for the sake of pursuing discipline, but without the ambition and the desire and the subjective experience of pursuing things with discipline, it's not going to lead to anything. It's the subjective experience of desire and ambition and pain and joy, so on and so forth, of things. The subjective experience of things kind of naturally calls for discipline. When you invest your emotions in things, when you do have access to your subjectivity and you pursue the outer world, it becomes rich because now it is invested with your uh, the energy of your psyche. Libido, it's called in psychoanalysis. Uh, this process is called cathexis. You invest your emotions. You gain this tie with things outside of you or things within you. It can happen as well. And this would make a personality come to life. It's the relationship between ourselves and the person we live in, the body we live in, uh, the quirks and, and the, the strengths and weaknesses, and the relationship to the external world as well. Other people, hobbies, interests, work, school. This is how uh, personality comes alive. And the basis is the subjective experience that you would use to emotionally invest or cathect into your experience of life. You bring the inner richness out and then life appears rich, which is why when you uh, suffer losses in the outer world, it feels like a loss because you're losing your emotional investment in that thing. So if you don't have the subjective experience, if, if your inner world isn't real enough, you don't have enough access to it, if your emotional life isn't rich enough to be investing in the outer world, it's bland, you don't have a personality. You can pursue discipline, but it won't lead to anything because you don't have the interest and emotional investment accessible to follow through on it, to apply it in practical ways, so on and so forth. We can compare the position of not having a personality to an undomesticated animal. If we come across a wild dog, we don't think of it as having a personality. But yet, isn't it exactly like someone, like a person with no personality? They take care of what they need to take care of. They they find their food, they take rest, they, uh, whatever else they do, hump other dogs. And then with their free time, they chill, uh, do pleasure-seeking activities, and then go back and forth between these two, like work robotically, and then follow instincts in free time to just garner pleasure. This is exactly what a person with no personality does. Takes care of what they need to take care of, and then spends the rest of their time kind of just dwindling it away. But when you bring discipline to a dog, and what needs to be understood here is the point of discipline is to channel subjective experience. So if the, if the dog doesn't have access to its own inner richness, like it's been deeply traumatized, 
bringing discipline to it isn't the thing that needs to be done. First, it needs to be accessed. It needs to be made a friend of, just like your internal world might need to be made friends with. And then once that subjective experience is free, then you can train the dog. You can train the drives and the instincts into socially acceptable uh, channels. And then the dog looks like it has more of a personality than it did before. It, had, it has the same energy. It has the same libido. It has the same subjective experience. Granted, we're not talking about or we're talking about after it's been uh, befriended. It, it's all the same, except the only difference is we've used its ambition, its desire, its access to uh, internal affairs, its subjective experience. We've used that to enact discipline. And the subjective experience through discipline, desire through discipline, the willingness and intention of engaging with discipline makes a personality become apparent. Now the dog uh, socializes in ways that uh, are more refined. It looks like it has a personality. Does it actually? I'm not sure about the psyches of dogs. But what matters is the personality is real enough to the dog and the personality is real enough to us. It's not faking it. Uh, it's not pursuing discipline for the sake of just pursuing discipline unless it belongs to an abusive owner, which is how we treat ourselves when we make ourselves uncomfortable just for the sake of making ourselves uncomfortable, like there's some righteousness in suffering. Um, and and so it, it's a great analogy. It, it's this lack of domestication into the cultural and social world of the subjective things, drive, energy, libido. That's what results in no personality. So if we want to give birth or, or resurrect or bring more life to personality, first we would need to gain more access, deepen our subjective experience of ourselves, which would give us access to the materials of investing and connecting with things in the outer world. And through the inner richness, we bring richness to our lives. If this is something that you relate with, Schedule a free 30-minute session with me by clicking the first link in the description. I offer life co coaching at an affordable rate. I don't, uh, I don't, however, um, offer life coaching uh, if that's what you were looking for, or life encroachment if that was what you were looking for. Uh, reach out to me through Instagram at Coach David Ades or through my email David at DyingToLive.blog. Check out my Instagram for more content. Check out my TikTok for more content. Like this video if you do like it, and I will talk to you soon.